This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. And while he often wrote about seemingly simple characters, the work itself was beautifully crafted, flowing with a complex undertow. While the sports writer at the Chicago Tribune, Lardner began stitching together a series of stories in letter form about a hayseed rookie named Jack Keefe. When the Tribune deemed Lardner's slangy use of language inappropriate for its readership, Lardner sold the stories to the Saturday Evening Post. They were a smash from the get-go. Between their publication in the Post and their collection as You Know Me, Al, Lardner created another baseball character, one with an excuse for everything. Lardner sold him to the Post as well, and on July 31, 1915, the Saturday Evening Post introduced Alibi Ike, Lardner's most enduring creation, without no extenuation whatsoever. 1. His right name was Frank X. Farrell, and I guess the X stood for Excuse Me, because he never pulled a play, good or bad, on or off the field, without apologizing for it. Alibi Ike was the name Carey wished on him the first day he reported down south. Of course, we all cut out the alibi part of it right away for the fear he would overhear it and bust somebody. But we called him Ike right to his face, and the rest of it was understood by everybody on the club except Ike himself. He asked me one time, he says, What do you call me Ike for? I ain't no yid. Carey gave you the name, I says. It's a nickname for everybody he takes a liking to. He mustn't have only a few friends then, says Ike. I never heard him say Ike to nobody else. But I was going to tell you about Carey naming him. We'd been working out two weeks, and the pitchers were showing something when this bird joined us. His first day out, he stood up there so good and took such a reef at the old pill that he had everyone looking. Then him and Carrie was together in left field, catching fungos, and it was after we was through for the day that Carrie told me about him. What do you think of Alibi Ike? asked Carrie. Who's that? I says. This here Farrell in the outfield, says Carrie. He looks like he could hit, I says. Yes, says Carrie, but he can't hit near as good as he can apologize. Then Carrie went on to tell me what Ike had been pulling out there. He dropped the first fly ball that was hit to him and told Carrie his glove wasn't broke in good yet, and Carrie says the glove could easy have been Kid Gleason's grandfather. He made a whale of a catch out of the next one, and Carrie says, Nice work, or something like that. But Ike says he could have caught the ball with his back turned, only he slipped when he started after it. And, besides that, the air currents fooled him. I thought you'd done well to get the ball, says Carrie. I ought to been setting under it, says Ike. What did you hit last year? Carrie asked him. I had malaria most of the season, says Ike. I wound up with 356. Where would I have to go to get malaria, says Carrie. But Ike didn't wise up. I and Carrie and him sat at the same table together for supper. It took him half an hour longer than us to eat because he had to excuse himself every time he lifted his fork. Doctor told me I needed starch, he'd say, and then toss a shovel full of potatoes into him. Or, they ain't much meat on one of these chops, he'd tell us, and grab another one. Or he'd say, nothing like onions for a cold, and then he'd dip into the perfumery. Better try that applesauce, says Carrie. It'll help your malaria. Who's malaria? says Ike. He'd forgot already why he didn't only hit 356 last year. I and Carrie begin to lead him on. Whereabouts did you say your home was? I asked him. I live with my folks, he says. We live in Kansas City, not right down in the business part, outside a ways. How's that come? says Carrie. I should think you'd get rooms in the post office. But Ike was too busy curing his cold to get that one. Are you married? I asked him. 
No, he says. I never run round much with girls. Except